So ladies and gentlemen, today on Sports Files, we're going to take a, a very interesting look at probably one of the hidden stories in pro hockey history. Why the 1978-79 Birmingham Bulls of the World Hockey Association were called the Baby Bulls. Now, to, to, to say that the, the franchise ended up in Birmingham was a, a weird a connection of events might be an understatement. Uh, just bear with me for a second. The original uh, Bulls franchise started off as the Ottawa Nationals in WHA in 1973. The franchise had a very inconsistent first season. He entered the playoffs uh, uh, the first time in pro history I've ever heard this. He had to change their name because he moved out of Ottawa and were playing games outside their home rink. So to rename the on Ontario Nationals for the playoffs. Now that squad eventually, through owner John Bassett, moved to Toronto when it was called the Toros. Now the Toros were very, very successful in Toronto. Had a lot of former NHL players, Henderson, um, uh, Frank Mahovlich. But the problem is in the 72 to uh, 74 season, they were having difficulty with Harold Ballard because he owned the rights to Maple Leaf Garden and he was throwing heavy, heavy costs to John Bassett, the great John Bassett, the, you know, the, the industry tycoon, the media tycoon. And uh, he said, well, I'm not going to do uh, put up with this. He decided to move the whole franchise, Kitty Caboodle in 1976, to Birmingham and calling the Birmingham Bulls. I mean, Bassett, uh, you know, look at the Tampa Bay Bandits in the USFL. He had a, they had a knack for naming squads. When he ended up in Birmingham, they became probably the roughest team in the league. Now, uh, Gilles Leger coached the team for a few games until Pat Kelly was brought in to coach for the rest of the 76-77 uh, uh, season. Now, in 77-78, former Minnesota Golden Gophers coach Glenn Somnor was hired to lead the squad as head coach and GM. And that, that team, ladies and gentlemen, it looked like a cousin to the Slapshot squad from the famous movie. They were called the Birmingham Bullies because they had uh, a lot of goons uh, on the squad led by, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, Steve Garbano and a few others. Now, um, the Flyers were dirty, but the Bulls were even dirtier. Now, uh, in one contest called the Thanksgiving Day Massacre, the game started with 10 players in the penalty box within the first minute of play. The Bulls won 12-2. And it was the only one of three uh, bull teams to, to qualify for the WHA playoffs. But in the, uh, the playoffs, he lost the Winnipeg Jets. Now, 78-79 ended up being a very interesting season because there was always rumors going on that the WHA was going to expand. A lot of people didn't think Birmingham was high in the list for expansion because obviously being a Southern team, you had Atlanta having problems in the NHL already. And I don't think they were ready at the time for a second squad in the South. So uh, when Somnor uh, left uh, uh, the squad uh, to uh, go with Minnesota, uh, the great John Brophy he was coaching a minor pro at the time. He had to play with a uh, coach for the Voyagers. He had to leave the league. Uh, even though the team finished last in the league, the, uh, John Bassett started to uh, look at the possibility of keeping the youth movement going just in case the franchise would continue to exist after he left. Now, the, the squad itself had tried had Mark Napier, Langway, and Kenny Lindsman previously, and they had made the jump to the, uh, the NHL. Birmingham was always known for taking a big uh, chance on young players. Now, they were trying to recruit Gretzky for the squad, but uh, Gretzky uh, didn't want to go. And uh, although Bassett failed to sign Gretzky, they, uh, they eventually signed numerous future stars and semi-stars of the NHL. Now, just these, most of these players are under the age of 20 or in the early 20s. Ladies and gentlemen, get, get this list. Just tremendous. You had Ricky Vibes, Patel Goulet, Craig Hartsford, Rob Raymond, Wayne Dillon, Louis Schleger, Gaston Jingra, one of the Hanson brothers, Dave Hanson, uh, who uh, was still quite young. Uh, they had uh, Pat Riggin and Keith Crowder. Now, these players, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there were very, very strong on offense. That season, that's the year when uh, Goulet and Vibe combined for almost 120 
20 points. He both scored more than uh, 25 goals. But with Paul Henderson, our great uh, Canadian superstar, as the unofficial uh, veteran core of the squad, he, uh, he did quite well, but not enough, unfortunately, to make the playoffs. Now, when the merger occurred, uh, the WHA only had so many limits to get the squads in. Uh, Quebec, Edmonton, uh, the Jets, and Hartford arrived in, but they didn't want Birmingham. But get this, ladies and gentlemen. The league changed rules when they entered the league, the WHA team. The minimum age to play in the NHL was reduced from 20, uh, from uh, uh, 20 to 18. Now, uh, the players that couldn't play in the NHL were underage, could now, were now eligible to be redrafted. And, of course, uh, the, everybody from the Colorado Rockies to uh, the, uh, the Northeast and a few others uh, picked these players. Four of these baby bulls were selected in the first round, including three of the first six picks, while another two bulls were selected in the second round. Now, Phil Goulet, of course, was the most successful in the baby bulls, who retired in 1994 after uh, various concussions as a member of the Blackhawks. But the the uh, the good core there, especially Ramage, especially Hartsburg, very underrated defenseman, very good quality players. And if you look at the early 1980s teams of the Edmonton Oilers, the best comparison, as I could say, was the Baby Bulls. If you would take the seven or eight core young players of the 79 Baby Bulls, uh, put them on an NHL team, I really think, uh, and I, I hope you take this the right way, they should emerge with a Toronto Maple Leafs. I would love to see that happen. And it was not unheard of. Cleveland and Minnesota had merged just a short time before to stay in the NHL. I think Birmingham... Uh, but the problem is I don't think John Bass and, and Harold Ballard were uh, going to work together in any shape or form because Harold Ballard was all for himself, while John Bass uh, was always about, about uh, you know, finding new ways to, to promote his uh, personal love, which actually uh, him owning the Bulls gave him enough confidence to get into, uh, you know, major football for a second time. And that's what USFL, uh, USFL was. Now, uh, there's very few tubes and documentaries on the Baby Bulls, including, like I said, Vive and Lynchman and Langway. I think producing 15 of the best young players of uh, of the era, just with basic, a basic scouting system, with not all the money and investment in the farm uh, team, uh, to do that, they strengthened the NHL, even though they didn't enter the NHL as a, as a NHL squad. Uh, the impact of the Baby Bulls was being felt for years. If you look at 1980, uh, Craig Hartsburg, you look internationally, Hartsburg against Montreal, the big upset. You look at uh, Goulet, what he did against Montreal for years. Rob Raymond's, uh, you know, very strong, very strong player. Kenny Lindsman, uh, Napier, uh, you know, uh, language, Stanley Cup winners all. So you take those 14 Baby Bulls from those last two seasons of Birmingham, and let me tell you, the legacy is there. And I really, I really think there should be a 30 for 30 documentary or a major uh, talking about it. because the transition you got a lot of figures here. You got the Goon Bulls, you got the Brophy and Bassett years, you got the Glenn Tomlin, good for a comment. You got Goulet, you got Vibe, you got all these players. And John Brophy basically uh, was taken seriously as a head coach because of the Bulls and his impact on maritime uh, uh, players and squads. It's still being felt today. In my home region of Woodstock, there's people have been influenced and coached in camp uh, by John Brophy and his legacy. He is sort of like the uh, Casey Stengel of, uh, of uh, maritime sports. God bless his soul, he passed away a couple of years ago. John couldn't can't speak up for himself anymore about the Bulls, but he would probably say, he said this once, he said, we had a team. Said, we were a good squad. Uh, we didn't have the best goaltending because we were relying on the ancient, I mean ancient, Ernie Wakely as their number one goalie. And Pat Riggin, you know, was, was a, uh, wasn't a bad player. But, I mean, you look at even Crowder and Schlegger, and like I said, the second and third line baby both, they were quite impressive. But I don't think they were destined to get Gretzky because I don't think uh, even Bassett could afford Gretzky. Parkinson had the uh, deeper pocket. So it is COVID Monday, uh, kind of a damp uh, day in New Brunswick. 
Hope your gardening's going good. Don't forget the maritime bubble opens on the weekend. Canada is a week in Canada. All I can say, uh, God bless Canada, because, uh, you know, we're going on the states and internationally, you know, they're not being safe enough in Canada. We work hard to beat the virus or 90, 90% of the virus. Just be safe out there. To all the listeners in the states, we're praying for you because you know what needs to be done. I don't have to tell you. I could do a 37-hour lecture or a one-liner, uh, you know, go to the polls and get something something better in there for everybody. Because right now, it's, it's not for everyone. Anyway, enjoy the podcast. Give a like, comment, and subscribe. Well appreciated. Past 88,000 clicks on the channel earlier today. It don't sound much, but there's no monetization and there's no ad promotion, ad-free, and uh, no cost. That's why we like it. Have a good day. Bye.